David Drape here, Drape's Creations, here to talk about dioramas. We're going to be doing a quick diorama tutorial today. Today I'm going to be talking about our special primer that we use on our dioramas. There's the background. <laughs> and so, that's how I take what is throw throwaway polystyrene that you see in uh, shipping and packaging and I turn it into something really nice. So this one's already been uh, ready to go so I sanded it down, got my edges to be a lot nicer, um, got everything kind of like set up the way that I wanted it to. Right here there's going to be a stream that I'm going to be adding later on as we go along. Um, but today mostly what I'm going to be talking about is how I do our, my primer and what I do is it's a mixture of white glue I'm going to smack myself in the face with that white glue oh, white glue and uh, baby powder you can use any type of baby powder Johnson & Johnson or like stuff you find at the dollar store I, I find they both work about the same so you you can even use clear glue. Now, I will show you how to mix them up in these little containers and I'll show you exactly how I do that. I'll take the lid off of this one. This is a video I'm shooting for somebody's commission uh, that they've got me doing for them. Let's see, can I get that to come out? I forgot to open it up. Um, so this is a commissioned diorama that I'm working on right now. <coughs> and I'm making a video talking about the primer that I use. It's a big shout out to Soda Melboja. Yeah. <laughs> cool, man. And what you do is I filled up my container halfway with the white glue. Now it would be the same thing for the white glue as well. So I'm going to fill up my container, or the clear glue, I mean, with the clear glue halfway as well. I'm going to show you what it looks like when you mix up both. Put that in my way. It's like, it's like a cooking show. So now I've got them ready to go right here. Let's see, can you see what I'm doing? Yes, you can. Okay, cool. So I'm going to open up my dollar store baby powder. Like I said, there's no difference between the Johnson & Johnson's brand and the dollar store brand uh, for mixing up this primer that I use. And I'm just gonna squeeze the baby powder right into there. And what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to fill up the container. There we go. With as much of the baby powder as I can. Now I'm gonna take stir stick or any type of possible stick. I got some paint on my finger. Um, and I'm gonna mix it up. And I can I'm starting from the middle, I'm gonna put wrap my fingers around the outside so that way I don't spill any baby powder as I'm mixing it. And as you can see, it's going to try to spill out. I'm gonna tap it on the bottom of the cuppy to get it to stay in there. There we go. And that's gonna create less of a mess, less waste. And you're gonna to start to see it. It's gonna to start to kind of look like bubble gum a little bit. Bubble gum with like powder in it. <laughs> Um, so I'm going to keep mixing it until all of my baby powder has been worked into there and it's going to create a smooth uh, cement like mixture that uh, you can paint onto the polystyrene and the more layers that you paint onto it, you want to be patient with it, the more layers that you paint onto it, the harder it's going to become because each layer becomes uh, its own separate thin layer of cement and see that's the consistency that you're looking for right there and the more you mix it 
the more it's going to get rid of those little chunks of powder you might have in there. There we go. Alright, so now I've got it the right consistency. It's just how I want it to be. Now it's ready to be painted on. So, um, I can show you really quick how to do the clear one too. And show you that there's really no difference in it. So I'm going to set this one aside because you do have some workable time with it. I, I don't have to worry about, oh, I have to hurry up. So the clear one, after I'm done mixing it, I can set it aside and come right back to it. So again, I'm just trying to pour as much as uh, I can into the container. That's, I think I need a little bit more than that. There we go. Okay. Close it up, don't need to make a mess. And no, I'm gonna use a different stir stick. Grab another stir stick right here because I, I can reuse this stir stick even once I'm done. So again, I'm gonna wrap my fingers around the outside of the cuppy. It's uh, one of those ramekins you get from a restaurant. Uh, you could even get it from Smart and Final or a res restaurant supply store uh, for pretty cheap. Uh, so as you can see, it mixes up the same way. I'm going to tap the sides. Not really much of a difference here. I accidentally ordered a big container of the clear glue instead of the white glue. But I wanted to show everybody that it doesn't really matter which type of glue you have. If it's the clear glue or the white glue, it still works for making the primer. It's just mixing the glue that type of glue with the, the talc and that's what the baby powder is, it's talc. Alright, so see how I got the same consistency as the white glue and as you can see it's actually changed color too, it's actually turned white just like the talc. And the talc is what creates the, the like cement barrier. So now I got these two cuppies. If, uh, usually what I would do for something larger like this I would mix up in a cuppy like this. Um, but for now, uh, this will work. Uh, I was going to shoot a tutorial of how I made these. I made these just before the, the lockdown, uh, but they're made out of toilet paper. So I, uh, we felt that was a little tacky to make a video of how to make these. Uh, when it was a speed paper mache was the, the technique I used. Um, and it's, it's pretty strong, pretty sturdy. Uh, I have one painting up right here getting started that's the first layer of the brown on there as you can see it looks pretty cool um, once I start to get a couple more layers of the color on there and I got it looking the way I want I'm going to then take a take some Mod Podge to the outside of it as well just to just to seal everything in and make it even stronger so that way these are gonna be removable and you can move them anywhere you want put them on the outside of the diorama uh, put them on the inside of the diorama if you wanted um, to give you more uh, choices for your photography or for your display capabilities. So again, let's get back to the primer. So applying the primer, I did not, I did not sand this. I left this porous on the top here. You want it to be a little porous because what's going to happen is the primer is going to seep into these pores with this first layer. This first layer is thin, you want it to be, you just want it to go on there, you want it to dry. Um, I find taking a fan to it is much better than taking a blow dryer, because the if you use the blow dryer, um, the top is drying, but not the bottom, and you don't really get it to dry all the way through. And if you, you are getting it to dry all the way through, you're staying in one area for too long, and it's heating it up, and I, that's not what I want for this, uh, for this diorama. So anyways, as I was saying, I'm going to paint on the first layer of primer. I'll show everybody what that looks like. Let me get that off the stir stick because the stir stick is still reusable for stirring up some more primer. I'll set that aside right there. And you can use any type of um, paintbrush that you have available to you. Let's see. I am going to bust uh, one of my chip brushes. A chip brush is like one of these larger throwaway brushes like this, but I reuse them because they are reusable if you clean them. <laughs> I'm 
and I'm kind of lazy about cleaning them. As you can see, there's a lot of different colors on there. Plus, I, I used to do a lot of uh, paint nights where I would show people how to paint step by step. Um, I'm going to be doing videos of that later on. So I got a nice generous amount on both sides of my paintbrush. That's what's important right here is you want a generous amount on both sides of your paintbrush of your primer. So nice thick amount. It's not even dripping. So it's nice and thick. So the first spot that I want to hit is going to be my little like, lake or river uh, stream running through right here. And I'm going to paint it into there in a back and forth motion, just getting getting it worked in. So now I'm gonna do the same thing again. Nice, nice thick amount. Let's see, can you I'm gonna push this back a little further so you can see exactly what I'm doing? I'm gonna go a little faster now, just so you can see how I'm doing that. So I'm gonna work that in. Same thing, both sides saturated, nice thick amount. Work that in nice and quick. And what's gonna happen is once I've worked in this primer all along this area that I've created it's gonna dry and harden up and I'm going to end up putting at least another two to three layers on top right here before I start to paint it but the cool part is is that as I go along I can add a lot of my rock effects and my sand effects and what you want to do is you want to have different um, grains of sand, different grains of dirt. Uh, I a lot of times I'll just go outside and I'll get some uh, some clean dirt from an area where I know that uh, the dogs in it, uh, do not poo or pee at. Yeah, uh, you want to make sure that <laughs> that's not happening. So uh, this is some some sand that I have right here that I got at the beach. That's really nice, really uh, fine sand. Uh, that I, I reuse over and over again uh, for a lot of my effects and then uh, I have dirt and sand that I collected up at uh, Joshua Tree uh, when we were at this really cool music festival um, that I like to, to use in the dioramas because I, I think it's neat that everybody gets a little piece of Joshua Tree with them. <laughs> um, I'll be throwing in some, some rocks that we collected as well. Um, and these these are things that you can find naturally. You don't have to pay for them. Like you you can if you would like to, but honestly, you can just use this this stuff that is around you in nature. What what's better than nature? Yes, you you can uh, you can clean it. What I do uh, a lot of times, uh, especially with the rocks, uh, is I will clean them and get them ready to to go on to the dioramas. Uh, it allows you to glue it in place better for something like that what I would do is I would use the hot glue uh, to hold it in place and then seal it up around it with uh, some tacky glue uh, or some Elmer's glue and then even take the uh, primer and put it on top of that so as you can see it's picking up on here uh, nicely uh, it's a nice thick layer on top right here. The whole thing is going to be get, get covered in this. Uh, then I'm going to put a fan on it. It's going to end up drying. As it dries, it's going to shrink the styrofoam a little bit. So you might see some picking up here and there. That's going to disappear when uh, I put a couple more layers on it. And once everything gets put in place, I wanted it to feel like there were layers to this almost. So you, you have, this is where it starts and there's like a step stream step step the trees can be placed anywhere and um, I'll have a tutorial of how I'm going to put together the trees because down here at the bottom once I've got it uh, painted up uh, and looking the way that I want it to I'm going to add different mosses to uh, allow it to be placed practically anywhere on the diorama and it will hide what is underneath it to make it look more like it belongs in that spot on the diorama naturally but that's, that's another time. Uh, so I painted on this. You can see that's what the white glue version looks like. I'm gonna move this over here real quick and I'll show you what the clear glue version looks like. Don't really have to change my, my paintbrush. It's fine. I'm just gonna give it a quick little mix because there were some bubbles 
from it sitting around for a second, that's fine. Don't worry about those bubbles. Just mix it back up real quick. It's got the same consistency I want it, again, to have. Uh, whoops. And then I'm going to come back in here and I'm just going to go ahead and hit this up in, in these corners here. I want to make sure I get everything covered in this primer. And it's uh, as it dries, you're going to see a difference in the color between the primer and the... Uh, the styrofoam that's what's neat about um, working with the polystyrene is it, it's that that bright white so the primer ends up drying more like a, a yellow or a tan uh, and there's a huge difference between the two of them so as you're going along any spots that you might have missed with the first couple layers you'll you'll be able to see and you'll be able to catch There we go. So this is this is the first tutorial that I'm doing right here about the primer. I'll do another tutorial showing you what the primer looks like uh, after it's dried and how I can add a lot of the effects that I want. Now, as I'm going along right here, if I really want to, I can start to add some of my finer sand, especially in this stream here. Uh, in fact, I will go ahead and show you exactly how to do that and I'm just tossing in some spots that I saw that I missed right here because I do want to put some of that sand into here and it's gonna be the finer sand so there we go get that quick quick and dirty I'm gonna get that quick and dirty okay so that's on there oh no no missed a little spot right there dab 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 okay all right got that spot now now I will show you, uh, sometimes what I'll do is I'll mix the sand that I'm using with the primer and I'll paint that on, but that's more for uh, rust effects. If I want something to look like it's super rusty or like it's, it's really rotting um, or I just want there to be a texture, I'll add uh, the really fine beach sand for that. That's a, a really nice texture to it. Um, but for right here, what I'm going to actually do is I'll pour it into, I got this copy that had some glue in it from earlier, but it's nice and dry. So I'm gonna pour the sand into here. And sometimes you'll have like little things like, especially because I got it from the beach, uh, you'll have little things like pieces of wood or um, pieces of seashell in there. Don't worry about that so much, it's okay. You can pick them out as you go along. Which is why I poured it into the cuppy, even though I'm going to take this and sprinkle it into my little area where my stream is gonna be. So I'm gonna take a little bit of it, I'm just gonna sprinkle it in to the wet area, just so that way I can start to get that dirt texture. And you'll see, as we go along, what it'll look like more. It's gonna, it's gonna be really neat. Cause I'm gonna, I'll come back and I'll show everybody what this, what this looks like as we go along. that on there so I'm gonna let that dry and what I can even do is I can pick up the diorama and kind of tap it around like that just to see okay none of it's moving none of it's falling out that's gonna dry real nicely and stay in place uh, some of what I do could be uh, compared to uh, miniature train terrain um, I did I, I, I go all over the place and, and learn what I, I pick up uh, the trees, for instance, was a video that I learned uh, from uh, a gentleman who was doing smaller D&D trees, and I thought, oh, hey, you know what, I'll bet that could work for the size of trees that I want. And the trees were originally made for a children's book uh, that I'm still in the process of doing right now. The first uh, book in the series is out right now on Amazon. You can find it, Rufus the Friendly Monster. Uh, we have a video we're going to be releasing soon of him reading his book to everybody. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be a lot of fun. Um, and then probably release a video of how we made it because I've been getting a lot of people asking me how do we do this, which I think is kind of funny because um, we researched a bunch of other people and saw how they did their YouTube channels and then just kind of picked it apart and started putting together a formula of like, okay, what, what do we like? What do we want to do? How do we want to do it? And what do we want it to look like? 
Um, I don't really focus too much on the lighting. I don't really focus too much on um, having a super expensive camera. Uh, the camera that we're using that's the smaller camera where we do the close-ups is actually uh, a Canon that I, I believe it was only 250 if I'm not mistaken and the um, other uh, camera that I'm using uh, that I usually get us looking at that we talk into uh, is a Sony Handycam that the LCD screen turns around so we can see it. Um, again, I'll be doing another series where we'll break it down, how we show it. Um, it makes it a lot easier for us. We can see ourselves being super dorks and talking to the camera with too much hands and things like that. Ooh, 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 3D and stuff. Um, but, you know, hey, that's another time. So, uh, as you can see, I've got a nice thick layer of our um, primer on here. Uh, you don't want to do the sides right now. You just want to do the top. As you can see, if I would have done the sides, there's some right here dripping right off. Some, oops, there was some right here that was dripping right off, so I'm going to swipe that away real quick so it doesn't continue to drip. Because I don't want it to drip everywhere and get all over my table and everything. Um, it, you can just chip it off easily. It will just come off with some water because it is just um, baby powder and glue. So if you add some warm water to it, it will just scrub out very easily. Um, and as you can see, I need to mix up some more to get the top right here. If I were doing um, something where I had to get different angles of uh, a building or something, I would do one side where it's laying flat, wait for that to dry, then flip it over and then get the other side of the wall. Only because um, it would drip really badly. Uh, it, takes, it does take patience. Um, but this is also why I have multiple projects going at once. Um, so, yeah, anyways, I think, uh, I think I, I've touched on enough points uh, of this video so far, of like how to mix the primer, what the primer is, what the primer will look like once it's done. And then when I come back, I'll show you guys, when I come back uh, for another quick tutorial, um, talking about the primer, uh, you'll see how it's hardened up, and we'll start to add more rocks and moss and colors and things like that because this primer is also really good for uh, painting as well.
Drapes creations. Ah.